Greetings YouTube. Today I'm going to show off some of my small figures. First I'm going to show off a couple of stone figures I have. This is a lion made out of actual malachite, um, which I just happen to find very attractive. I'm a big fan of malachite. I love the the uh, variations in color and the swirls and such you can get. And uh, I got a good deal on this uh, lion uh, carved out of malachite, so I picked it up. I don't think I've ever used this in a role-playing game, but it would make an awesome statue. Um, and I will actually give me a give me a moment. I'm gonna give you a sneak preview here. That's a 25 millimeter character, so you can see that would be a really really big creature, but it would still be it would still be very cool. Um, then we have another stone figure. Now this one I have used uh, in a role playing game. I placed it on a on the table under a cup so no one could see what it was, and then I described that there was a large uh, kind of a vaguely beehive shaped building. Kind of a very, very hollow um, sort of I'm looking for. Shoot, can't remember the name of the structure. Oh, I can't remember the name of the structure. It's got a proper name. Uh, Mustafa, very hollow Mustafa. That's what I'm trying to think of. Mustafa? Mustaba. Mustaba. Egyptian type of early pyramid, if I believe, if I'm not incorrect. But I had, I said, that, you know, inside this building you see an altar, and, and behind the altar is this. And this is scaled to a 25 millimeter character, so that you know a 25 millimeter character comes to here. And on this, on the altar was um, an item. I don't remember what it was, but it was shiny. And the characters looked in there, saw the shiny item, and went away because <laughs> they were of the opinion we walk into there, and that snake's going to come alive, and it's going to kill us because it's way more powerful than us, and it's made out of stone. And they are correct. It would have come to the life, and very likely done grievous harm to them. But they didn't go in there, so there you have it. So next we'll do this figure, which I kind of just showed off. I can't remember where I picked this guy up. Um, he's a lead figure, but I think he may be pewter. I'm not sure. Um, I happen to like the, the the shield. He's got the shield hand with the katar uh, in it, and that sword is you know kind of cool. And this was bef long before they had the orc swords from the Lord of the Rings, so I don't know. It's because it's a common theme and kind of a vaguely barbarian-ish. The helmet thingies are just absurd, of course. You don't helmets don't have those things in real life. Helmets they have those things in real life. Uh, get the people who are wearing them killed. Now here we have a custom figure. This was all. This is based on an actual Warhammer fantasy figure that was then heavily modified. This is a, entirely a custom head. Um, uh, the sword is from another figure, the pommel's custom. The spikes you see on the figure are uh, actual metal spikes from uh, Brad's, uh, small metal nails. Uh, and it was pa painted by my ex roommate uh, who goes by, uh, in the SCA, it goes by the name of uh, Angus. And he was uh, very, very talented. And he has another one here, and this one's not in its greatest shape, and it's not his fault, it's not in its greatest shape. Um, but here you have an orc, and my orc's arm is in is uh, DOA. I don't know, or, or, or missing in action. And there is the shield, which he also painted. And he's very, very good at painting miniatures. He he paints actual irises and such on the figures. Um, and uh, I just thought this was a cool add it to my collection. I don't know what happened to his arm. It was a rough move. Of course, after the fire, it was a very hurried, hurried move as well. So I'm not to really to blame 100%. Now we have a dragon. And this dragon, um, Chris the Ogre Scapophytus, Dovercon uh, 9, November, uh, June 10th to 11th, 1993. And this was a prize. I won this at the con. At the, at the con, I was there. If I'm not incorrect, I was there representing the Society of Creative Anachronism, doing a demo. And, or, and my friend Angus was showing that day. He was doing miniatures and such. Um, but I have used this one in uh, in, in a role playing game before. That's a very nice figure, don't you think? I mean, it's slightly dusty, but it's a very nice figure. You get the air can out, and blow that thing clean. Um, and then we have this is a bear. And I don't know where I got this guy from, in complete honesty. I don't remember. But I did have used him in, in, in uh, 
miniatures as, as role-playing games and you can see he makes an exceptionally good dire bear that's a that's a big bear um, and speaking of bears I have a smaller figure and this is actually I believe part of a werebear line but I'm not a hundred percent correct um, but still a pretty big figure not quite as daunting as the other one uh, but again, I'm a big fan of bears, and I picked it up someplace for probably a reasonable price because I'm also very cheap. Um, now here we have a little dragon with a pedestal and a gem. I don't know how I got this. I don't know why I still own it. It's kind of on the tacky side, but I still own it. There you have it. Um, here you have um, the classic wizard with a, a, a crystal ball. Uh, this is also pewter. Um, then we have a larger wizard with a crystal ball. I need to get rid of some of these figures. I really do. They're not doing me any good. Some of these I care about, like the custom painted ones and the fighter and the and the dragon and stuff. I like the stone figures, but some of these other figures, I like these little ones up here. I got no use for those. And this one right here, it's a cobra on a on a, on a cube. I mean, that'd be awesome. I mean, they'd be usable in a role playing game, but I. I don't know. I don't know if I'm ever going to use that. I may keep that one because it's a good scale. But these three guys in the front, nah, I got no use for those. I got to find a way to find a home for those. Um, then we have this one, which I actually have a kind of a slight soft spot, but I might want to get with this one and get rid of this one as well. Which is a kind of a wizard. He's got a staff. He's got another gem in the staff, so you know he's all impressive looking. And again, that's a pewter figure. Um, then we have ugh, this one's really heavy because this is very large and it's solid pewter. We have a dragon with uh, with eggs. I, I may just get rid of this one too. I don't know. This one here is one of my favorites. This one is made out of bronze, and it is a dragon tamer of some variety. And there he is, surrounded by by crystals, which could be conceivably be dragon dragon eggs. Any idea what that says? Give me a sec. Nope, that's way too small for my eyes to see. I apologize. Um, but I like the dragon in particular. I like the dragon. I think he's uh, he's very cool. And the scale of the dragon to the person was uh, very reminiscent of the pseudo dragon um, familiar that my old ranger uh, Sir Lord Takan, who was a ranger lord and uh, very very powerful. We played. I played him from first level to 26th level, so he got very, very powerful. It was a high level first edition game. We ended up owning a space station, so yeah, high level. Um, I'll definitely be keeping him, uh, but uh, these guys in the front, I really don't have a use for these guys. Probably this guy either. I don't have a use for these, so I'm going to have to find something to do with them. I just don't know quite what I'm going to do with them yet. But there you go, folks. There is some of the figures I have in my current collection. Um, I don't buy miniatures much in the last, you know, 20 years, but um, we have some. We also have an unbuilt Treeman miniature, which my wife wanted. And we've never put it together. We've never painted it. So we need to get that going. It's a big one. It's a full scale, you know, five inch tall figure when you're familiar with it. So we definitely need to finish that one. Um, and there you go, folks. These are some of my early uh, gaming materials Oops. and just general collections and some of the stuff that my old roommate Angus did because he was very very talented I think he's I don't know think he's still doing miniatures anymore um, he works in the he doesn't works in the LARPing field at least did for quite a while he used to make LARPing um, prosthetics and weapons and such uh, but he was very talented at painting um, which was very nice he, he, it was interesting to watch him work um, but there you go folks these are my miniatures that I've got in my collection